Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you plugins and effects order for EQ and compression in Reaper. Now, when we deal with plugins or effects in Reaper, let's go to the track effects. On this track, when we add plugins to our plugin chain, they're going to go in some type of order if we're using more than one. And that order can really matter depending on which plugins or effects we choose, most notably for EQ and compression. So in this video, I want to focus on the order of those two plugins we're going to use in our projects. So the drum loop right here, let's listen to it. As you can tell, it has a lot of low end information that can trigger a compressor quite a bit. Let's add our frequency spectrum analyzer so we can see the frequencies on this loop. As you can tell, there's a lot of low end information on this loop. So, because of that, it's going to affect a compressor if we put it on this track. Let's check it out. Let's make the attack and the release really fast. Notice that low end really squashes the compressor. And that's fine if this is how we're going to keep our drum loop. But let's say we're going to add an EQ or a filter to it. Right here, let's turn on the high pass filter and filter out the low end. But let's first turn off the compressor. And if we look up over here, we can see the difference. The faint line is before, and the thicker line is after. So really filtering out that low end information or energy. But if we keep our compressor before the EQ, it still sounds very squashed because the compressor is still reacting to all that low end information, even though the listener isn't going to hear it in the end. So, in this situation, we probably want to switch around the order of these plugins. So, let's turn off the compressor and put the EQ before it. So, now if we hear the compressor after the filter, it's going to sound very different. It's not as squashed because it's focusing on the whole sound, not the stronger low end. So, in this situation, it makes more sense to put the filter before the compressor. And it'd be the same way if we're cutting some lower mids in the sound. Let's turn off the compressor. Let's bring down some lower mids. Again, we're cutting that information. But if the EQ was after the compressor, just drag it after. The compressor is still going to squash the sound based on the low end and the low mids, even though it's not going to be there in the end. Making the compressor sound very squashed. But if we put it after the EQ, it's much more focused on the final sound, making it sound more balanced. 
but it's going to be the opposite way if we boost some top end or mid range. Let's put this back to its default. Let's go back to the EQ and turn off this filter, but let's boost some mid range and top end. So now, if we compress after this, notice it squashes the top end and the mid range boost. Because it's compressing after the EQ, the mid range, and the high end boost. So for this situation, it's better to put the boosting EQ after the compressor. So let's move it there. Let's turn off the mid range boost and the top end EQ. Let's compress the loop again. But now with the EQ after the compressor, if we boost the mid range and the top end, it's not going to compress that boosting. Notice it sounds much more open. Before, it really squashes that mid range and top end boost. But if we put it before the EQ, it's a much more open sound because it's not compressing the EQ boost we're adding. So, what does this tell us? And what can be learned from this example? To me, it tells us that for most situations, we should use EQ that filters or cuts frequencies before our compressors, and EQ that boosts frequencies after our compressors. So the best way to do that is to simply use two versions or instantiations of our EQ, or two separate EQs that do different things, one for cutting before the compressor and one for boosting after. Just copy and paste this and put one before the compressor and one after. So for this one, we're just going to filter out the low end then we'll compress that sound And then finally, we'll boost the mid range and the top end EQ. So now we're cutting any frequencies we don't want to hear before the compressor. But after the compressor, we're boosting any frequencies we want to hear more of. So it's a nice balance of cutting and boosting before and after our compressor. Now I chose a drum loop, but this is going to apply to any sound source in your mix, whether it be a bass guitar where you're rolling off some low end or bass synth, but you want to bring up some upper mid range for clarity. I would do this with two separate EQs, one before and one after. And the same thing for acoustic guitar, piano, and definitely for vocals, where I want to cut some low end rumble and some mud from the vocal, but then I want to compress the signal and boost the mid range for clarity and the top end to make the vocal sound prettier, and doing this before and after the compressor. But keep in mind, there's always some exceptions to this rule, but for the most part, I like to cut frequencies before the compressor and boost frequencies after the compressor. So that's pretty much it. That's plugins and effects order using EQ and compression in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.
Bye.